Hi there. My name is Roman and I am a customer success manager at Toloka. We help companies and teams label their data efficiently using a crowdsourcing approach. In this video, we'll discuss the golden rules of crowdsourcing task interface design. There are a few guidelines that we've developed in practice and we apply them whenever possible. These guidelines will help you to speed up tasks, improve quality control, provide better results and save money. They essentially provide a wide range of benefits, which we always strive for. Crowdsourcing task interfaces should follow the general principles of user experience design. Put yourself in the performer's shoes. First, they have access to lots of different projects at the same time. A performer can spend hours completing tasks. A performer's earnings depend on their output, so they are motivated to complete tasks as quickly as possible. Most tasks are monotonous and involve doing the same actions over and over again. Tasks require concentration. A distracted performer will make mistakes and be banned from the project. Your challenge as a requester is to help performers work quickly and efficiently and limit the ways they can do something wrong. How can you accomplish this? The first rule is to provide a cross-platform interface. Users access crowdsourcing platforms from computers, tablets and smartphones. The more devices your task interface supports, the more people can access and complete your task. That's why it is so critical to adapt the interface to different platforms. A mobile-friendly task doesn't have any empty spaces or text that doesn't fit on the screen, for example. However, not all tasks work well on different platforms. For example, if your task involves interacting with an image, like selecting objects, it probably can't be done on a touch screen. Large images or videos take a long time to open and use a lot of traffic. You may also run into various issues displaying audio and video on different operating systems. The bottom line here is, adaptation is important, but be careful with it. The second rule is to provide keyboard shortcuts. You can assign them for any action, like setting a verdict, playing or pausing a video, and opening a link. If the interface supports shortcuts, describe them in the instructions or display them in the task interface, of course. Shortcuts significantly speed up tasks, but don't forget to remove them in mobile versions of the interface. They are useless there and consume precious screen space. The next rule is to check required actions. Performers usually work fast and can accidentally skip important steps. You can track and check a performer's actions in the interface. It can be a simple check, like checking that a performer selected an answer, or it can be more complex, like checking that a performer played media content, opened a link, or typed the correct text into an answer field. You can use this tracking to measure the quality of a performer's work. The latter will be discussed more in the quality control videos. Moving on, make sure that your task doesn't require performers to navigate external websites too much. Loading external pages takes extra time, so a performer might get distracted and leave the task. It also poses a challenge for you because you can't track a performer's actions on an external page. External sites can also stop working. Consider using a screenshot or a saved copy of the data. If you have to use an external site, check that a performer at least followed the link. The next few tips apply to visual content. Don't get carried away with the complicated design. You'll sometimes see an interface with lots of bright colors. Every element is highlighted, not just the important ones. Or nothing is highlighted at all or too many background images are used. No matter what, a minimalistic design is always better. Performers won't get tired of it and they will stay on the project longer. Pay attention to the interface layouts and spacing. 
it is always better to try and fit elements onto one standard monitor screen. This way, performers can evaluate tasks without scrolling. Elements that are logically related, like checkboxes, should be grouped together. The most important information should stand out visually. Less important information can be hidden or displayed as a pop-up tooltip. When you finish the initial design, double-check that all the elements are necessary and help performers complete the tasks. For example, you might think that a translation task requires links to every online translation service. But in fact, you might soon realize that performers only use the two most popular services. Unnecessary links can be removed or reduced in size so that they don't attract too much attention. Finally, let's quickly look at the task page. Remember, a crowd task is usually short, simple, and can be done quickly. If there is only one task on a page, a fast performer will lose time waiting for the platform to load the next one. These seconds add up and eventually slow down the whole work. To eliminate this effect, consider adding multiple tasks to one page. But how many tasks fit on a page? Our recommendation is as many as you can complete in one to five minutes. Performers don't get tired of long lists. How should you arrange tasks on a page? Again, it's worth remembering that a task page should be an easy-to-use interface. Keeping too much information on the screen is exhausting, while unevenly spaced content is confusing. Here are our recommendations. One page should contain several separate tasks. This is convenient when the tasks are simple enough. We recommend making individual tasks with the same width and avoiding large gaps between them. When grouping tasks, don't put more than three tasks in one row. If possible, keep one task in one row. To summarize, in this video we talked about what to keep in mind when creating the interface and how to help performers work faster with a user-friendly task page. The design of the task page affects performers' productivity and concentration. Always, always test your task before launching. Make sure that there are no issues with the layout and that all the buttons and shortcuts work correctly. Try submitting a task with empty fields or no answer chosen, for example. Check that all the required actions are done. In our next video, we will look at how to maintain a required level of quality evaluation. See you there!